now that you've mastered what the NPV is and how we go about calculating it, we're going to move on to another investment appraisal technique, which is the internal rate of return or the IRR. This is perhaps the second most important uh, investment appraisal tool. So what is the IRR? Well, the IRR or the internal rate of return is simply an investment appraisal tool which helps us ascertain whether or not we should invest in a given project. In other words, the objective is exactly the same as with the NPV. Right? With the NPV, we saw that if the uh, NPV is positive, then we should invest in the projects. If it's negative, we should avoid it. Um, so it was ultimately just a tool that helped us uh, make this decision uh, on whether or not we should invest. So it's the same sort of principle in IRR, it's just that the execution is different. So what does the IRR look like? Well, specifically the IRR is the point at which NPV is equal to zero. So it's the discount rate that gives you an NPV equal to zero. And this can seem sort of counterintuitive at first, but I promise you that it will make sense by the uh, by the time you're done with this video. So just stay with me for a bit. So if we think about the relationship between the NPV and the discount rate, well, we know that they have uh, an inverse relationship. So the NPV decreases as the discount rate increases and vice versa. Although I don't think we explicitly mentioned it at the NPV video, you would have seen that that's um, quite clear, right? Why do we know that? Well, if you think back to the equation for NPV, well, we said that NPV is equal to um, PV minus I, and I'm just gonna look at the most simple case of this uh, PV minus I. So let's just take a single cash flow, uh, and you know, the, the logic will hold for all of it, um, whether you take annuities or you know, uh, just single cash flows, the, the concept is the same. So if I look at a single cash flow, then you take that cash flow uh, at time one, divided by one plus R to the power of one, and then subtract the investment. So R is the discount rate. If this increases, well, you've got a bigger denominator and therefore the fraction will have to decrease. And likewise, if the uh, discount rate decreases, you've got a smaller denominator and so the fraction as a whole will increase. So PV and the discount rate have an inverse relationship and therefore the NPV and the discount rate have an inverse relationship as well. So the NPV decreases as the discount rate increases and increases as the rate, as the discount rate decreases. Let's look at this in, in a graph. So if you've just got uh, this NPV up here on the, on the uh, y-axis and, and discount rates over here on the x-axis, then um, you'd have an inverse relationship. So you'd have a downward sloping uh, sort of line, something like this. So you can see that as the discount rate decreases, well, the NPV increases, and as the discount rate increases, the NPV decreases. And of course, the NPV can be negative too. Now, at this point over here, if we focus our attention right here, um, at this point, whatever the, this discount rate is, the NPV is equal to zero. So at this specific point on this, on this graph, uh, the NPV is equal to zero. And what we're interested in is that exact rate. So the rate that gives us uh, a zero NPV. That rate is called the IRR. So the IRR is the point at which NPV is equal to zero. It is a rate that gives us a zero NPV. So for example, if you've got, you know, a 1% discount rate here and sort of 5%, 10%, 15%, 15%, I've just made these numbers up completely. You'll find that the, um, the IRR is at this point, which is approximately 6%. Okay, so at 6%, if you have a discount rate of 6%, then the NPV would be equal to zero based on this chart. So how do we think about the IRR? Well, the IRR is expressed as a percentage and is compared to the cost of capital in order to make an investment decision. If you remember with the NPV, we said we invest in projects that have a positive NPV and we don't invest in projects that have a negative NPV. With the IRR, we can't um, decide by looking at the IRR itself, okay? Because the IRR could be sort of any value. It could be, um, you know, you could have a positive IRR, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you should invest in the project. And that's why it's crucial to compare the IRR to the cost of capital. So let's think about the difference between the IRR and the cost of capital. Well, the IRR can be seen as the return you expect to earn on an annualized basis or monthly basis or whatever it is, given the time value of money. So crucially, it's the return you expect to earn given the time value of money. The cost of capital, on the other hand, is the cost of raising finance or capital, and hence the cost of capital. So it's the cost, it's how much uh, it's costing you to you know, either borrow money or um, 
you know, raise funds through equity, whatever it is, however you're raising your capital, or how much is that costing you? That is the cost of capital. The cost of capital is also expressed as a percentage. It shows us the amount of pence we pay for every pound of capital raised, or the amount of cents we pay for every dollar of capital raised. So one of it, the cost of capital, is how much it's costing you to raise finance. And the other, the IRR, is showing you the return that you need to get, or the minimum return that you need to earn. So what does our appraisal rule look like? Well, if the IRR is greater than the cost of capital R, then we should accept or, or can consider accepting projects. The IRR, remember, is the return that you expect to get, the minimum return you need, because it's the point at which MPV is equal to zero. And you compare that to the discount rate. And if it's greater, then you accept the project. If the IRR is lesser than the discount rate, then you reject the project. And finally, if the IRR is equal to the discount rate, then in an academic instance, we would accept uh, or say that we should accept the project. But in the real world, you know, it's probably a bad decision because if the IRR is equal to the discount rate, then it means that you have a zero NPV project. So yes, you're not losing any money, but you're not making any either in real terms because the NPV is equal to zero. If the IRR is greater than the cost of capital, then it means that we're earning more money than we're spending, i.e. that we're making money. If, on the other hand, the IRR is lesser than the cost of capital, then it means we're earning less than we're spending, uh, i.e. we're losing money. Generally speaking, if the IRR is greater than the cost of capital, you'd have a positive NPV. And if, if the IRR is lesser than the cost of capital, generally speaking, you'd have a negative NPV too. So let's think about that graph that we saw before we can essentially add to it and say that in this region here, uh, say for example, your cost of capital was, I don't know, two and a half percent and your IRR is 6%, then you'd be making money, right? Because if, if two and a half percent is somewhere there, then this would be your NPV at this point over here. So that would be the NPV at two and a half percent. And the IRR is 6%. So the IRR of 6% would be greater than the cost of capital of two and a half percent. If I take another instance, say for example, the discount rate is, is this value, it's 10%, and the IRR of the project is 6%, well, at 10% discount rate, this is your NPV, it's negative, right? Um, so you wouldn't want to invest. And likewise, the IRR would be lesser than the cost of capital. 6%, of course, is lesser than 10%. So if the IRR is greater than the cost of capital, then we're making money, and if the IRR is less than the cost of capital, then we're losing money. Put another way, the IRR is the rate that shows you the maximum cost of capital you can afford to pay. Right? So if you think, look at this graph again, if your cost of capital is 6%, you'd have a zero NPV. So you can afford to have a cost of capital up to 6%. If it's lesser than 6%, it's great. It means you're making money. Um, but if it's more than 6%, then you're going to end up losing money. So you can't actually afford it. So the IRR, you can think of it as, as some rate that shows you the maximum cost of capital you can afford to pay. So hopefully you've understood the principles uh, behind the IRR, what it is and sort of how it works and what the purpose of its existence is. In the next couple of videos, we'll learn how to calculate the IRR uh, using the equations. So what do we learn today? Well, we've learned that the IRR is the point at which NPV is equal to zero. If the IRR is greater than the cost of capital, it means that we're making money and therefore you should accept the project. If on the other hand, the IRR is lesser than the cost of capital, then it means you're losing money and therefore you should reject the project. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. If not, I'd recommend, rather strongly recommend that you watch this video again because it's crucial that you understand the concept of the IRR uh, and you know why it exists and how we go about evaluating projects. And once you understand that, the next bit sort of becomes easier because it's just a case of applying this concept. So in the next couple of videos, uh, we'll look at calculating the IRR. But that's enough from me for now. Have a go at the quiz and I will see you in the next video.